Well, I'm Paolo Mangi. Uh, I'm the CTO of the Open Air Research uh, Infrastructure. And what I'm going to present today is one of the uh, core services that we are offering, technical services, uh, called the Open Air Research Graph. Now, uh, Open Air is a no-profit uh, um, organization. Uh, we are working in Europe and to offer services in support of open science, from training to support board trained trainers at the level of the institutions and the level of the communities and the countries. But at the same time, we offer a number of services, technical services, in support of open science in general. So to simplify life to those willing to uh, carry out activities in an open science safe way. So fair and reproducible where possible, but open at the same time. So three things that we are trying to uh, tackle uh, among the many others are uh, ways to track open science. So the way science uh, is being produced by scientists, how it's being produced and how the elements of science are connecting with each other. That's the graph we're talking about. Uh, we would like to monitor open science in terms of uh, indicators like quality impact or simple raw numbers. And we would like uh, all this content and material to be available to anybody willing to do the same. And the same holds for discovery. So discovering in an open science world is a little bit different than uh, in the standard world of articles, uh, since we should consider open science as, uh, let's say, a, a network of objects interconnected, which together enable uh, correct uh, reproducibility, assessment, and uh, of course, scientific reward in the end. So at the core of the services, we are building the open air research graph. Uh, it should be intended as a knowledge graph, large knowledge graph of open metadata, uh, which contains information about scientific products. So publications, data sets, software, other products, how these are related, so linked with each other, and also linked with uh, funding information where this is made available or where we can infer uh, this information, as well as research communities. So you'd be able, for example, accessing the graph to understand if a publication has been funded by a given project in a given, in a, from a given funder or multiple projects from different funders, how these are connected to uh, organizations, which are the authors behind, and how the publication is linked, for example, to a software, a piece of software in GitHub or to a piece of, or, or to a data set that is somewhere stored in the, in the network. The graph therefore should be open as complete as possible by complete, we mean we should include all trusted sources by scientists. Uh, they duplicate it because it's very typically the case you collect the same uh, metadata information about the same object from different sources. Uh, transparent, so everybody should be able to reproduce the graph and find ways to do it, uh, but at the same time, uh, be able to understand where the information that is contained in the graph comes from, so proper uh, provenance information. Uh, decentralized, that's the other idea we have. So the graph should not be considered as an entity uh, whose um, uh, ownership uh, belongs to open air only, but should be uh, reused by others to feel complete and store the information that we collect and infer most of the time into uh, data sources that are uh, supposed to be there forever, like the repositories or uh, uh, the archives, etc and trusted, which means we would like to have the users involved in the loop of creating uh, the graph. Uh, now, this is a view from the moon of the model. You see we have research products intended as to the right, you can see the subclasses, publications, data sets, software, and other products. And on the left side, you have, let's say, the administrative part of science. So the projects, the streams, and the funders, uh, as well as the organizations linked to the products, and uh, provenance, where we collect the metadata and where the files behind this metadata are being stored. Uh, to give you an idea, we are collecting from actually 17,000 sources, not 12,000, so the number has changed. And we uh, collect from a variety of sources. Uh, some of these are known, uh, like uh, the uh, Crossref and DataSide, but of course we range from ORCID, other kinds of registries uh, like uh, grid.org, ROAR, Microsoft Academic, Cezin on Paywall, uh, we dig into GitHub, all possible publishers, of course, the uh, archives, the open archives or the preprint archives that are available out there. And we also dig in into the research infrastructures of Europe, which are the place where scientists perform and find the services to, to perform their experiments. 
and often store objects that do not really belong to the scholarly communications, but should. For example, virtual machines, methods, uh, protocols. We try to reveal these objects and link them to the material that we have and we collect from more traditional sources. So to give you an idea, we collect from the data sources. We have an entire machinery that does that uh, um, on a continuous basis. Uh, we are collecting, again, is 17,000. Uh, around 400 million records uh, and uh, close to a billion bilateral links. And we include around 15 million full text where we can find this, right? The first implementation of uh, the, the first round of the graph is because what we call the raw graph uh, is uh, very simple and not the duplicated. So we have to go through the duplication process. Here is where we can actually take different versions and recognize different versions from the preprints to the published version and put them together while still uh, keeping track of the original provenance, then we can enrich it thanks to the mining. This is one of the interesting parts because uh, the mining actually can collect links from publications to software that have never been revealed in the metadata or specified by the original authors. We dig into GitHub, for example, et cetera, but also links to uh, projects and to funders. We have 31 funders in beta, 21 in production, and around 3.5 million projects. And for each of them, we mine into the publications trying to find the links uh, between them. As a result of that, we obtain a graph that we publish to the world. We publish it for free, and we also publish it through uh, several portals that we are building. Some of them tailored to communities, some tailored to monitor, for example, find for the funders, we wanna know how many open access or non-open access publications they have, how many of these are linked to data sets and to software, uh, how many double dipping, let's say different funders are funding the same products, um, studying uh, the, the trends of science and so on. And uh, we are strictly connected with the, yes, with the um, European Commission participant portal. So uh, project coordinators can uh, collect uh, the information from there and be let's say suggested, recommended, which are, the objects they have produced and therefore deliver to the to their funders, um, but uh, I can go back here. Okay, uh, among the consumers which are not visible here is uh, Scopus, Saival, Mendeley. They use our APIs because we have the largest collections of links between articles and publications. So. Whenever you click on Scopus, you get the list of uh, data sets linked to uh, your articles, thanks to, to the graphs that we're offering. And uh, these are the challenges we have to deal with. So heterogeneity, quality and accuracy and completeness of the graph. Uh, we've done, I think, a good job, but there's a long way to go. And uh, you can find everything you need at develop.openair.eu for the APIs. Um, you have, uh, I go here, uh, several dumps that we publish regularly that you can collect and play with uh, to perform your research or develop your services. I'm not going into the details of this, but uh, there's a full collection called the Open Air Resource Graph in Zenodo. We're very open to collaboration. This is the, the light. So uh, we offer our data infrastructure uh, and the, the mining infrastructure, which is very large to those who are willing to uh, run their experiments if they can improve the graph for the sake uh, of uh, public good, let's say, because we want the graph to uh, be owned by the community, not by us. We want it to be free at the point of views. So that's the uh, final uh, idea. And of course, we'd be happy also to embed your improvements or your, or your the results of your uh, methods into the graph and make them public. And I'm done. For uh, anything, you may find information here, ralph.openair.eu. You can contact.